Hi, I'm Max King, owner and founder of Dragon King Bioactive, and I'm here with my teammate, my partner in crime, Valentina. You want to tell them what you're going to have on your channel? Cleopatra. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to also show you some worms. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to have a pet when I grow up. Yes, we have a pet. We have one together. So what's it gonna be called? Rally's Reptile Corner. Rally's Reptile Corner. So that's what it's gonna be called. So this is kind of an intro of all the things we're gonna be Valentina doing. Valentina King. Valentina King. So today we're going to be making the very first Mad Max Bioactive Substrate. I've done a lot of research on different kinds of substrates and this is the best thing I felt I could come up with to kind of make my own. So we're gonna be setting up an isopod and springtail enclosure today. So again, this will be the Mad Max Bioactive Substrate. So what we have in it is we have topsoil, we have sand. Now this is Repta Sand. I do recommend, I'm gonna be using regular play sand, um, but we did have the isopods in the mail, so we wanted to get something right away. So we got that, so it's ready to go. We have orchid bark with charcoal. Uh, I found this because I was going to have charcoal, but I found this that had both because originally I was going to use Repta Bark and then charcoal. But I'm going to give this a try and we're going to see if that works out. We have some excavator clay to kind of yep, harden things up. We have Eco Earth, which we have prepared right down mm -hmm. here, which is great. One brick filled up about less, a little less than half this bucket, so that's really good stuff. We have spring moss. Uh, this is gonna hold the moisture. This is stuff I had from BioDude that I had before, which we'll talk about in a minute. And this is all stuff we're going to be feeding the isopods, which we will show you in a minute as well. That's food. We're gonna be mixing it up in this. Oh. That way we can get it mixed up soil and is soil is dirt. Very good. <laughs> This is Cleopatra. She loves worms. Her favorite color is orange. And she loves heating up. <laughs> and she also poops in the bath. In her water bowl. Yeah. Yeah, she does. What do we do when she does that? We dump it out. Mm -hmm. And she's also on the shirt. So the soil, you want to make sure if you're going to be using any, that it doesn't have any pesticides or anything like that. Very important to not have any of that. So next we are going to add the sand. So Valley, how about we tell them why should you not, or should you only use sand for your reptiles? No. Why not? Because you can play with it too. It's from the beach. Well, that's true. But why was it dangerous for reptiles? Because they might eat it and they'll either get sick or die. Very good. Yeah, that's a common thing, which I'm sure a lot of you have known if, you, if you're reptile owners or if you're new. Uh, sand is a big debate and a big uh, conspiracy with reptiles because it's advertised having bearded dragons on every reptile sandbag, but it is actually very dangerous because they can ingest it and they can become impacted, become constipated, and that can harm them very much and even kill them. So little things like that is another reason why I wanted to start this channel too, is to kind of provide simple, easy ways and fun different ways to take care of your reptiles so you know you're being safe. All right. Valley, why don't you go ahead and start mixing that up for me when you're done fishing. Here, mix that up. Mm. I'm very good at mixing things up. Mm. Mix. Looks like Oreo. Yeah. 
We make great homes for our pets. Even we have cats. We do have cats. Here's this. This is the orchid bark with the charcoal. So what the charcoal does is gonna help keep that absorption Can they mix pretty it? equal. Yeah, go ahead. I'm very good at mixing. Regulating moisture is a really big part of bioactive enclosures. Uh, and there's like, there's lots of different ways you can kind of fluctuate there. it. When you have different reptiles, like a bearded dragon, you want a lot less humidity. So there's different ways to kind of adjust that. We're gonna do one reptile bark part too. It's not on there, but I think it'll add some a little color that? to it. Watch out, Val. Little color. Smells good in here. We're gonna add the excavator clay. Wow, excavator clay. Watch out, Alex. It's not a little clay. <laughs> or if you add water to it. Excavator clay is something I actually would really like to, I've never messed with on its own. It's a really cool way to, if you mix it with water, you can build like tunnels, like form them, and when it hardens, it'll stay there. So it's, it's something that's really cool, but it'll add some solidity. Because the goal for this substrate is to be able to have them, see the whole bag See the smoke coming out of it? To have them be able to stand on it, More but also okay. be able, <laughs> to dig when they need to. Bearded dragons like to dig, there's different animals. Reptiles that like to dig. All right, next we are going to add the Eco Earth, which takes a half hour. You put it in a bucket, you add some water, and uh, you got it here. It's really cool. It's a uh, coconut cure, C-O-I-R, is what I wanted to use. I could not find it, but it looks like Eco Earth was very similar. We're going to. You I'm it? your assistant. You're my partner. Yeah. Yeah. And I help you. It's me and you in this, yep. And I'll help you in your videos. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be my assistant. Yep. Uncle Jake, too. Yeah. yeah. Uncle Jake, my brother Jake is filming today. So let us know in the comments how he's doing. Be nice, viewers. We're Be also nice. going to have my channel. You'll see me. Valley's first channel, since while we're doing this, her first video is going to be on feeder bugs. Uh, different stages. We are actually breeding our own feeders, which has been a lot of fun. Um, we have a lot of we'll just show you more. Things. So I have this, heat, this spring moss. Um, but I do have some left from the Bio Dude. If you haven't checked out the Bio Dude, definitely check him out. Uh, he is actually what I have over in our Bearded Dragons tank right now, in Terra Sahara. Look at my We're gonna add this. Spring tails. These are this spring moss. That was pretty bad. So what spring moss does is this is like the main factor in moisture. Um, and in controlling humidity that I've found. So this stuff really holds moisture very good. So when it comes to, this is gonna be like the basis, so I'm not gonna add any more of this here when we mix it in. But if you're looking for something like a ball python that needs more humidity for shedding, then we'll add a little more. And we'll have different kinds. And that is it for this. So here, here we go. We're gonna mix all of this up. This is so exciting, you guys. This is something I've wanted to do for a while and I've envisioned it and I've always wanted to do this. So I'm very excited and, and I want you guys to be there through the whole thing. You know, I, I could have set this up and did it and you know, and maybe it didn't, won't go the way I wanted to, who knows, but I wanted to be able to 
do this, let you guys know how it went, what we can learn together, how we can get these things done and really get an awesome environment for any and all of our reptiles that we want. So we got some big plans here at Dragon King Bioactive and this Mad Max Bioactive substrate is definitely a big part of it. I have a 20 gallon wand here, which we are going to be setting up our isopod enclosure. We have powder blue isopods, dwarf white isopods, and temperate spring tails in here. I had our bearded dragon Cleo, when she was a baby, I had her set up in here and it was a great little setup and I've been debating on what I wanted to put in here, but I figured, you know, this may be the best bet, most beneficial. Where is that? Awesome. Container. Nice pods in there? Not yet. Here. Mm. Putting. Oh, it's so awesome. I'm so happy with this. Oh, okay. Tell you what, maybe a bad idea, but we're gonna try it. Watch out. Put a dumper in there. Woo. Here's about the time they put an ad to make you watch something in case something bad happens. But that won't happen. Ooh. Need to take some Ooh, out. Power. But we want it to be about four inches high all the way around. Any powder? I don't know, that looks pretty good. And yeah. white. We're gonna keep it like that. So what we're gonna do before we start putting things in, can you grab that water? So what we're gonna do water. is add some water now. <laughs> so and what, we're, what this is made for, and the goal for this substrate, you're gonna see some puddling, and that's a good thing. Okay, that's good. So what, we're, what this is for is it's going to be, this was safe for a bearded dragon. We're gonna have this top layer here. It's going to be dry, completely dry, not figuring out anything. And then we're gonna have the level of moisture become, there's gonna be more moisture as it goes down. So that's the goal. That's what we have over there. And this is what we're gonna have for this as well. So what we do is we just kind of water that once a week just to kind of keep things going. So what we have next is I got these were left over from the bio dude as well that I have for the isopods. This is some isopod bark. So this is stuff that the isopods will eat. And this is stuff that will go a little bit under this here. Because they like going under things. Right. So that'll go under there. Because the isopods will be going in and around everything. And this is something they'll eat below. We'll also give them plenty to eat up top too. This turned out so great. I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Okay, so now that that's there, we are going to add eggs, well eggshells. So what this is gonna do, Scott, you gonna help me? Come on. Is we're gonna crumble these up. I probably should have added these into the mixture when we mix it, but we'll do yeah. that. She doesn't like to do this part. <laughs> uh, I don't like it. So what this will do is this will give the isopods a little more calcium opportunities here. Um, just to kind of build them, build them up. Because even happy. though the ideal situation is for them to stay alive and act as a cleanup crew for the reptiles in your enclosure, uh, they can't eat them which another big reason why we're doing this is because I spent a good amount of money buying a cleanup crew of isopods and Cleopatra over there thought it was a very uh, 
fun idea to eat all of them. So now there's only springtails there, which is fine. They were good for her and it was great, but hence the reason why we're gonna do something just ice, just clean up crew in here. Now we're gonna add some leaf litter. So this is, these are maple leaves, which I, I brought these in from outside, which is something a lot of people do, but before you do that, you need to make sure that these are safe for both your bugs and your reptiles. And maple leaves are actually great for both. And we have one right in our backyard. So that was awesome. So what leaf litter does is it provides shelter and food for the isopods and springtails. And I did uh, sterilize these uh, in the oven. There's a process that I do, which if you guys are interested in finding out about that, I also found this in the backyard. And this is something, just a log that's decomposing and you want something that's decomposing for them to start eating as well. I also sterilize this in the oven. I can give you guys the how-to and step-by-step -step for that. Uh, if you'd like, let me know in the comments. So that, that's pretty much it for their setup. So now, Valley, you wanna put them in here now? Yeah. Okay. So first, we're going to put the springtails in. So these are temperate springtails. There's two different kinds of common springtails. There's temperate, and then there are tropical. And they're really hard to see with their little white, can you see them at all? Little white things jumping. They're in there, I promise, if you can't see them. So we're just gonna kinda put them in there. We don't have to bury them. They'll do their own thing. I'll keep that. And then we have 30 plus dwarf white. And you can see these a little better. You can see those are ice spots. So and these guys may be a better, a better thing to put in with Cleopatra. These are a little smaller, you can't see them as well. These are powder blue ice pods. So these are the kind of the sizes that you're gonna see outside, like roly polies, they call them stuff. So these, these are some of the most common isopods you'll find, and I'm sure a lot of you who are, uh, trying to get some out of here calling around, who know a little bit about this. Uh, powder blues and powder oranges are some of the most common and easy to reproduce. So that's why we're gonna get this kind of a steady ecosystem going here with these isopods. And this, the plan is to have this kind of be the grandfather of all of that, because eventually we will be selling, I'd like to sell this Mad Max bioactive substrate, as well as uh, clean up crew cultures. So this could be like the great, 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 great grandfather of your guys' tank if you guys choose to buy with us as far as ice pods and springtails. So that's what we got there. So for food wise, I've prepped up some Rapashi morning wood. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael. Uh, for ice pods and springtails. I plan to have some of the, that's what she said, office stuff in here too. So if you're office fans, keep in touch. So what this is, this is, Rapashi makes some awesome food. And what this is, is you just kind of, you mix this up, boil some water, mix it up, and it becomes solid. And this is something that the isopods can eat and they will love. Um, we're also going to put some chia seeds Chia seeds are good uh, for ice pods and springtails. They're okay for reptiles too. However, um, they do have like a, like a high amount of protein and it's something that you don't want to get to. Yeah, go ahead. Sprinkle some, just little sprinkles all over. Very good. Yeah, so, but these, so you don't want to give it to your reptiles all the time, but this is something that will grow fast and decay fast. So it's something that's perfect for food for the isopods and springtails. Okay, that's funny. Because it'll give them something to eat all the time. And that could be enough right there for them. 
We're also going to have this rock here. Just because of this brick. That, I'd be fine with just feeding them this, but I do want to add varieties. So we have this fish food here. Fish food's a pretty common one. And then we have bearded dragon food here. For, I don't like to give these to our bearded dragon because it's a lot better to have fresh foods. But that's what we have for that. So, so that's it, you guys. That's what we have for our isopods and springtails. So what we're gonna do is we're going to keep everybody updated on all of this that's going on. So if you guys are interested, keep up. We'll get maybe some different plants growing in there, seeing if we have some breeding going on. But this is the start to a lot of new things. So thank you guys so much. Do all that like, subscribe. We are gonna have a Patreon. Uh, so if you guys are interested in that, we'll put the link down there too. Gonna be a lot of benefits there. But overall, thank you so much for watching. Now you want to say bye real quick? Say thanks to everybody. Bye! See ya.